Oh, there we go. What's going on, Queen? Hey, how are you? Man, I'm blessed. No complaints. I am excited to have you on here right now, right? <laughs> I was just telling people the reason why, right? I'm excited Shining. because you do something that I don't see a lot of people talk about. And I think it's so crazy because they don't realize how important it is what you do, right? So mm -hmm. I want you to explain who you are and what it is that you do. Got it. All right. So first of all, thank you for the invite. I've been following you for a minute and you, you, you the truth. You, you know what you're talking about when it comes to content. You teach it in a different way, in a way I've never seen. And uh, I just wanted to give you your flowers and, and thank you for allowing me to, to come on your platform. Now, and when it comes to, uh, to what I do, so I am Sierra. I am a copywriter slash messaging expert. And for those of you who don't know what that means is, Basically, what I do is I help create and write all of the verbiage that you see on landing pages, sales pages, Facebook ads, um, and most importantly, emails. That's kind of like my claim to fame. So as you're scrolling and you're watching these, you know, Facebook ads that pop up, you're opening emails from your favorite influencers. Um, I either help them create it or I create it for them. And so that's what I do. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because I'm be honest, world, you can't have content without having her you can't have her without having content it's like we we supposed to be right here together you know what i'm saying Definitely. and i think that's a big key that's why i was like man i gotta get her on here to just explain to y'all and give y'all the rundown of how to do copywriting right they don't understand it so before we go into it i want to know what were you doing before you found this magical power <laughs> uh so the crazy thing is so marketing and writing has like i've always been involved in it um, I went to school for journalism and advertising. I thought I wanted to be a, a hip hop journalist. And I was for a bit. Like I worked for Double XL. I did work with the source. Um, what was Ozone magazine mm -hmm. back when that was popping down in Atlanta? Um, so yeah, I, I did that for a while. Figured out ah, they don't really make that much money, but I still <laughs> enjoyed it. Um, and then I started noticing a shift with marketing probably like around 2009 like i'm like why am i getting so many emails now like why am i like what is really going on and how are we now going from because in print advertising copywriting has always been a thing it was yeah. but it was more so like ads in the newspaper billboards like magazine type ads and when i started getting a lot more emails once again this is like 2008 2009 i'm like okay something is, is changing so i started studying marketing again and I came across this term called digital marketing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, what in the world? Like, and then it had an element to it called copywriting. And once again, I knew what it was from a traditional advertising standpoint, but I didn't know how it was going to like cross over into the digital world. And then probably about 2014, 15, I started playing around with um, writing more emails, I, you know, doing pro bono stuff, just seeing what will work and then like 2016 17 like things started to kind of take off that's when i realized like okay i'm i'm really good at this like let's so now you're let's ahead of your time. Take it. yeah you're ahead of your time because i'm not even gonna lie to you i wasn't even thinking about none of that back then and i'm so crazy like i am a late bloomer to copyright i used to just post content i didn't give a <laughs> care in the world about the caption right like, and most people are like that and somebody told me, caption is where you sell, brother. I said, huh? <laughs> no, the message inside the video. And then I got the paying attention. And I'm like, you right. Yeah. You're right. So I was I was leaving a lot of money on the table because I was just leaving it blank. They're like literally <laughs> blank. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I didn't yeah. understand the power. And then once I start understanding the power, I'm like, hold on. Yeah. That's where the money at. Plus, yeah. the, the, the content, cool. But... The caption literally tells the story. Literally tell them exactly what to do and drive it home and drive them to your bank account, right? Yeah. So what was it like when you made your first dollar doing copyright, like in the <laughs> digital space? What was um, that first dollar? It was surreal because it, it took me a long time to realize that it was like a real skill. Because at one point, I thought everybody could write. Because once again, this is something I've been doing forever i won my first writing contest in the second grade so as i got older and people when i started doing this people are like yeah writing is just not my thing but i'm like maybe you just don't get the psychology like the psychological side of it then i start reading what people was putting together and i'm like no they can't write like they're serious they don't know what they're doing um so when i made 
the first amount of money I made from it, when I look back at it, I drastically undercharged. But I was like, okay, this is cool. Like this is I what can was do that this. Amount? Tell us, tell us. So what the first the, the first time I ever charged, I charged somebody two hundred and fifty dollars for a ten a ten email sequence. Yeah, that was good. Me. Hold up, that was good. For <laughs> ten emails? No. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about for them. For oh yeah, oh yeah. For them, they they but, they, they they you know ten x their return. But, but it was good for you too because that told you that you can really make money from this. That definitely. first two hundred and fifty, you probably was scared to even ask for that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It took me saying? a minute. It took me a minute. Um, and you know, then from there it was just like referrals, referrals, referrals. So. It didn't take me long to realize I was good at it. It just took me a long time to kind of like walk in, like and be confident value. with it. Like now, yeah. now I have no problem saying ain't nobody better than me. But like Ooh. two years ago, I'd be like, eh, you know, y'all, y'all cool. <laughs> so let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, that, that confidence as an entrepreneur, uh -huh. right? How, how important is that confidence and the habit and understanding value? It's, it's huge. Like, one of my coaches literally, probably like six months ago, literally told me, he said, stop calling yourself humble. He's like, you know, because when we use the word humble, we use it in a way as like downplaying our gifts and our talents. He was like, the only person you should be humble to is like when it comes to you and your relationship with God. He like, other than that, you need to like pop your ish. And not in a way to like make people feel a way, but just yeah. to, you know, one, number one, reaffirm yourself. And then number two, especially if you have the receipts, like why not do it? So yeah. it, it took it took me a while, but it's it takes getting around people who truly value what you do. Um also seeing the results that you're helping your clients get. And then just like waking up every day and like realizing like I'm really good, great at this. Like let's okay. let's go. I tell people all the time, you gotta be the one to build that confidence. You can't mm -hmm. wait. If you need the public to build the confidence, then you gonna you ain't gonna make it. You yeah, you're not gonna shallow. make it. You got to be the one to let the world know I'm the greatest at what I do and nobody can fuck with me. Simple as that, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, I tell people all the time, even with the word humble, if you look at the, the in the dictionary, the word humble means to put yourself less than yep. anyway. So you got to yep. be prideful. You got to yep. prideful means to take your achievements, not sweep your achievements under the rug. You got to say, yo, I did that. Yo. And not X, Y, Z, right? A lot yep. of us don't do that because we scared of other people's opinions and judgments. But mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, Yo, who cut your checks? You cut your checks. So mm -hmm. you don't got to be acting fake or nothing. You can be as transparent as you want to be in this world because you cutting the checks, you investing in yourself, you taking yourself to the next level. No one else is. So Definitely. stop being fake. Be yourself because it makes it easier to put out content, to put out whatever it is that you're selling because it's you. You yeah. got to wake up and turn on the switch, right? You know? I agree. So, so That's why I love people. when you start calling yourself the content king. I'm like, he, like you ain't care about what you was doing before. You're yeah. like, this is what I do now, and I'm the best at it, period. No, no, know what to say. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it, right? And I'm going to be honest, right? I'm going to give it to Shans, right? So I, it's, I still got the clip, too, right? I was with David Shans. I was at his face probably like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said in the video, he was like, I thought I was the content king until I met this guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that'll do it. So when he said that, I'm like, okay, I, I, I ain't take nothing heed to it. And then my team, it was like, you know, that, that that actually fits you. And I try to go copyright the king of content. Mm -hmm. I mean, the content king. I try to I try to copyright the content king. Uh, and somebody had the trademark. So I said, damn, I, I know I'm about to spend a lot of money on this. So mm -hmm. I need the trademark. So I said, well, if I can't get content king, what else can I get? And so I was like, the king of content, it actually sounds better. It's sounds right. more stern. So I trademarked, got that, and then come to find out the uh, content king died uh, on, on trademark, and now it's available. What? Right? But I want to know why it died, right? So it was some, it's another company that was similar to it, so I don't know if it was too close. So I said, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Just stay with the king of content and run with yeah. it and go all in. And it gives myself a brand, like people to recognize, and I think that was the importance of it, right? So break down what copywriting is. Like for the people who don't know what the hell we talking about because they ain't <laughs> as advanced yet, break it down. What is that? So copywriting is the process of writing words that make people take action. Um, the, the action, depending on, and I don't want to go too high level too quick, but depending on where your buyer is in their journey or where your customer is in their journey, 
depending on what the next action is for them, that's how you determine how you want to structure it and how you want to write it. But that's what it is. It's the process of writing words that make people take action, like plain and simple. That's that's exactly what it is. <laughs> if I'm a newbie and I can't afford you yet, right? Mm -hmm. And tell me what how should I start structuring my caption? Just the simple, the basics. So you want to begin with the end in mind. Before you post anything, you have to ask yourself, what do I want people to do after they watch this video, look at this image, or read this caption? Do I want them to comment? Do I want them to send me a DM? Do I want them to click the link in my bio? Do I want them to just engage and, and you know, say, say something up underneath? Like, everything I post isn't necessarily, you know, buy this, click this. Like, sometimes I post regular stuff and just be like, you feel me? And people, you know, <laughs> drop 100 comments. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Something like that. So begin with the end in mind. Before you post anything, ask yourself, what do I want them to do next? Like, what is their next move? And then you go, that's the first thing. After that, you ask yourself, do you want to tell a story? Um, do you want to do you want to educate? Do you want to entertain? Do you want to, like, what do you want to do within the caption? Because it doesn't always have to be, you know, business related. And that depends on your brand, your page, how you do things. Like, I mix in a lot of business and just, like, regular funny things that I find funny. It's not always, oh, copy, 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 do this, do this, do this. I try to be as human as possible um, on my page. So that's another thing you, you have to do. And I could give you, like, so if you're posting, a, like, say, for example, you post this IGTV, like, your caption could be, you know, if you if you know you always needed copyright in your business but you didn't know where to start, watch this IGTV uh, leave some comments below, share it with somebody who else needs it, something like that. But the goal for you is you want more views because it's IGTV. So like you know what your, what your goal is once you get ready to post it. But that's the, I think a lot of people don't begin with the end in mind. They just like, oh, I need to post to so let me post. And then it's all mm -hmm. over the place. That makes sense. That makes sense. And it'd be all over the place. I see somebody in the uh, comments, he says something about, can you write copy for a client who refused to pick a niche? No, I so that's probably the number one rule with working with me. If you are broad, no, <laughs> that's that's to me that's the number one mistake most people are making in business. Yeah. Not just coaching and consulting, people being too broad, like niche down. It you you will thank yourself for niching down. I went from writing copy for anybody who could pay me to now only working with high ticket coaches and consultants. Like I went from here to like here mm. and then I went deep go deep don't go wide because you're you can never become a master trying to serve you know people in all these different lanes like and that's why I feel like nobody's better than me when it comes to writing for coaches and consultants I've been doing it for the longest and I yeah. do it in a way that nobody else is doing it so you and your girlfriend you need to pick a niche and become like the best at that niche and sometimes you may think the pond is smaller but it's not like just just roll with it. Trust me, it's man. I'm telling you, but but definitely just roll with it. I think we all have to do that as entrepreneurs getting in the game. We just like, man, I want to supply everybody. I want to yeah. serve everybody. You got a dollar? Here I come. Right? Yeah. <laughs> nah, you got. It. <laughs> he said, "You, you know got a dollar? Here I go." Facts though, we won't air. We ain't even think it. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, I ain't paying attention. To nothing. You, you said you gonna pay me tomorrow? Yeah. All right. Whatever I'm figuring out, but no, you got to niche it down. Like I tell my clients all the time, who are you talking to? Like mm -hmm. even me, I say, yeah, I create content, but I create content for people that have problems with shyness, overthinking, and can't stay consistent. Boom. If you if you ain't in that market, I only want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because it is it's it's so I could say content. I could do content for everybody. I could yeah. do content for this person. I'd be all over the place, but I had to niche down, bring my pool down, and it allow us to get stronger. Yeah, right? definitely. So you get strong because you really get in that that lane and you master that mug. Like you do. You, and you, you know, really do. <laughs> so tell me how important because you say hey, email sequence is key. How mm -hmm. important it, it is to follow up and collect data. Like a lot of people not collecting yeah. data, and if they do, they're not using it. Yeah. So data, like data is how you should be making all your uh, decisions in business anyway. Like n you should never make a decision in business with the term I feel, because that means absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. <laughs> you like the data should help you make every decision. I just, I think it was just yesterday. People, because people are always like, well, how do I know if my emails are working? Where it, it's in the data. So your open rates, 
in my opinion, I keep all of my clients between 20 and 30 percent. Some most of them are over 30. But that so that's one metric you're measuring the open rates, your click through rates. How like how often are people actually clicking on the things you're putting in the email? And that depends on how often you're actually putting something in there to click on. So that that statistic is important, but it really depends on what you're selling and how often you're using call to actions. And then the other statistic is, uh, so it's open rate, oh, how much revenue you're generating or how many calls are you getting booked from email? So the data, like, it, it tell, it's super, super important. Yeah. Same thing with, like, if you want to go Facebook ads, okay, how do I know if the copy is working? Well, what is the conversion rate from the ad to the landing page or the ad to the website? How do I know if my sales page is working? What is your opt-in rate? But a lot of people don't track that. They just mm -hmm. like, well, I, I threw this up. I, I think this sound good. Well, we don't know until we see the numbers. And I, I yeah. even tell, like, even when clients hire me to do, uh, like, their copywriting audits, like, well, I don't, I don't know if this is working. Can you audit it and tell me what you think? I'm like, well, first I need to see the numbers to determine if it's working. And then we can make decisions based on that, not based yeah. on just, you know, what you feel. But it, it took me a minute to learn. I didn't learn the importance of data till like, two years ago. Like, I tell me, we all was late. I was just like, "Hey, let the lead come in." I don't even, yeah. I don't even know how you get this number. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. But then I, I got to realizing too how important it is to collect the data and follow up. Yeah. Follow up game is where you get rich. That's rich. where the money at. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But they don't know this, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I did a text message uh, 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 offer the other day, made like 50K in a day. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. they don't be understanding this stuff. They think it's like it's far-fetched to make money off the internet. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you just don't got your systems together. Right? That and it's the up here. Like when I tell people they should email, I think you should email every single day like personally but when i give people like the option three to five well i'm not getting on their nerves like why are you even thinking like that you need to think in a way of these people clearly have a problem because if they didn't they wouldn't have volunteered to get information from me and all i'm doing is trying to help you solve your problem if you don't want help you can just unsubscribe like don't that's look it. at it it's like well that's annoying to get an email several times a week like no you get a sales paper every weekend to go shopping yeah i'm pretty sure if they could give us sales papers every day they would but their they system would. is set up to get you in there to to provide you with information for like a week's worth of time when you're running a business you need to be providing information on a daily basis old navy send out emails every day <laughs> they don't that's, care that's but we, sometimes we just like oh well that's too, too cool. it's too it's cool. up here it, it once you shift that like I, I love when people unsubscribe from my email list. Like it, it geeks me up. Cause <laughs> it's like now I'm closer to the people I'm actually supposed to be serving. Mm -hmm. So that, I, like, that's another thing with the whole the email, the text. Like people be like, you don't think that's too much? No, <laughs> yeah, no. I think that I think they I, I think they don't understand America and realize that America is. Uh, ran off of sales. Everything is mm -hmm. off of sales. If you too cool to run sales, then guess what's gonna happen? You gonna fail. Yeah, <laughs> no like sales, you you fail. afraid to put your solution in the marketplace? Then that's, but that's a confidence issue. That's that's not even like a systems. That's more so like them getting out of their own head or thinking like, well, if they need it, they supposed to come to me. No, it's way too many options in the marketplace wow. for everything these days and. You have to stay at the top of people's minds. Even if they don't have the money right now, they may have it six months from now. But if you stop posting content, if you stop emailing, they're going to forget. Forget. Because somebody else on the tip of the mind. You know what I'm saying? So you got to go hard, right? But they don't understand. And I, I, how big is investing in yourself, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? I think this is what they mess up. That they invest, right? Like, oh, man, I'm scared. She calls how much? You probably tell them 10K, and that might be a low number. They might. I don't know where I'm gonna get to K from. It's like, but that's the problem. That's why you where you at. Yeah. So the the investing in yourself is is huge because when I heard a coach tell me this, I think it was three years ago, you can't charge something that you've never paid. So that's the first thing. Most people have an issue with investing, like, you know, four or five, sometimes even six figures, because they've never be like paid it. No, I'm sorry. They have a hard time charging that because they never paid it. But my thing is you have to look at it as an, an actual investment, meaning mm -hmm. you're going to get a return. I think a lot of people hear the number and in their mind, they don't even believe they're going to make their money back. So that's why they like shut down versus looking at it like, okay, 
I, I pay 10, but I can I can get 30, 40, 50 mm -hmm. if I follow the process. So once again, it's like people's perspective going into it. Like my first um, large investment was like 2019. I had never invested that much in myself and it was like 10K. And I'm like, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. Like I'm, I'm going to figure it out. But investing that type of money as well, as you know, I'm sure, it puts you in a room with a different group of people. Yeah. So even if you don't get it back from that program or that coach, you should meet people where you can still get your money back in some type of way. And then yeah. when you are investing in a service like copywriting, like if you have an offer that people actually want and you do good work, you're not going to have an issue getting your money back. You How just important not. is the offer? How important is the offer? It's super important. It's super important because... Yeah, I, I worked with people before, uh, like when I fir first was starting out, I was just, you know, willy nilly. Like, you got it, I'm going to take it. <laughs> you got that now? <laughs> but when I, I, you know, worked with a couple clients that I had never worked before, and I'm like, okay, why isn't this performing? And, you know, I was green, and I'm like, I never even looked. I knew the offer, but I never, like, dissected the offer. And the offer is super important. Number one, it got to be something people want. And, you would want it to be something that you've actually like sold before or you have a large enough audience to where people are literally telling you we want you to give us this like the worst thing you could do is create something that people didn't ask for or that people haven't have never purchased from you or anybody else and that, that's yeah. a huge mistake like most people are like well i think they want this no just ask them especially if you have an audience like yeah. i never thought about uh, offering copywriting audits and two weeks ago like people literally was in my dm every day like do you offer artists do you offer i'm like i ain't never you know but oh, then God. i did a survey with my email list and like 30 percent of the people was like yeah that would be cool and then i had to think about it because of the people that i'm targeting they already have things in place so they already have sales pages and landing pages mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily need something from scratch they just need another set of eyes on it to optimize it so I'm and like, I think okay, that's cool. key. You yeah. got to listen to the market, right? And I, I tell my clients, listen to the market. They're going to tell you they cry. You just got to be open and listening, right? So even like with me, I know a ton of people need content, but I also know a ton of people do content. But mm -hmm. then I realized, like, what is the big thing that they hate when it comes to content? Mm -hmm. Editing. 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 Yeah. So I just created the, a new product called the Editing Castle where we edit your content, right? Wow. And we give it back to you in 48 <laughs> hours. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to shoot content with us. We're editing. You know what I'm saying? That, now, that's, that's especially for people who not where you are. Yeah. It's like now all they got, like you said, all we got to do is, all you got to do is shoot it and send yeah, it to Take it. your iPhone. Take your iPhone. Shoot, bulk up. And then we made sure that the prices was reasonable. Like you get unlimited content edited all month for $4.99. Like, you ain't getting that no Whoa. more. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like, that's a great offer. Consistent, right? <laughs> You feel me? And another thing is, it's no contracts. And the thing about it is, if you don't like that first edit, you get your money back in the first 14 days. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, we want you to, to stay with us and stick with us because we know how important it is to put out content. So I hear a lot of people like, yo, I shoot content, but it stay on my phone, right? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, Dante, I don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, we help you with strategize the ideas for you if you need, and you can go out and shoot. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to wait on us to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, might that's, that's a great offer. I'm probably going to yeah. be hitting you up about that. Oh, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> necessary. <laughs> so give me this, right? If you have $100 left in your name, no following, no relationships, no nothing, just getting started, what would you spend it on to grow your business? I would create an irresistible lead magnet to grow my email list. That's that's what the that first mean? thing I would do. What that mean? So, <laughs> so, so... So the first thing I would do is identify a problem, right? Because um, you have to be able to identify a problem and then determine whether or not you can solve it. So for me, it would it probably would probably would be something as simple as like helping people start their email list. Um, mm -hmm. I would shoot a quick three to five minute video, like the three three things you didn't know about building your email list, even if you've never built one before. Give people three tangible, simple things. And then it'll be an offer at the end, like, hey, you don't want to do none of this stuff. Let's hop on the phone. Let me see what your offer is. I will create the lead magnet for you. Start your list. Now all you got to do is sit back and send them an email every day. That's, you that's know probably what I'm so crazy. Doing. That's hard. You know why? Because I'm listening to everything you said. And 
You damn near might keep your hundred dollars at the end of that because you literally can use your phone. You can use one of them uh, email sequences thing for the yeah. first thirty days or fourteen days with a free trial. Yep. No, so I would if if I had my if I still had my hundred dollars, I would spend that hundred dollars and, and run ads to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I would yo, do. Yo, it's so important collecting the data and using it and analyzing it and watching it. Uh, man, I, I promise you, my whole career, everything changed when I started collecting information and literally mm -hmm. using it. Right? I, I got look at go Facebook. That's their business model. Yeah. <laughs> But we that, don't think about that, right? We be thinking because nah. we too cool. We be thinking, man, they ain't gonna fill out that uh, that that form or that questionnaire, or or they don't want me to have their stuff. Or I ain't gonna call them back later if they say no the first time. I ain't gonna call yeah. them back. Get out your head. Get out your mind. Hey, they say no. That means first of all, they came to you anyway, so mm -hmm. they know they needed you. Just didn't hit that spot yet, or they yeah. really just don't know how important they need it, right? So you gotta stay on top of them, giving them value after value after value. Yeah, and I think that's the quickest thing. You don't gotta sell people, right? I tell people stop trying to stop trying to fuck on the first night, right? right. You know, let motor, you know, a <laughs> quarter, like take her out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for real. And then let it go, you know, and stop trying to just seal the deal. Like sometimes. I meet people and they want to pay me for service. I don't even want your money. No, yeah. I don't want your money yet. Let's keep building. Let me make sure I want to work with you. I think that's yep. first because our stress level, mental level, we are real entrepreneurs. So our mental level, people don't realize how many clients we have, how many different personalities we got to deal with, right? And then our life, right? So it's like it's real key as entrepreneurs to make sure that you Bet your clients. If I if I hear Definitely. a client, if they call, if they call and I hear that they got money restraints, I can't do business with them right now. Yeah, it's just because they're gonna overwork me. They're gonna yeah. Overwork me and not time. only that, you now you putting too much pressure on me. Yeah, like don't don't get me wrong. There's a part of what I do that's essential to your bottom line, but there's still other you know pieces to this puzzle that I don't control and I can't control. Like if I send a fire email out. But you, the person who built your funnel got the wrong links up there. That's not on me. <laughs> like, so it's it's like little things like that. And then it's and I I don't like working with people who don't like understand the process. Like it, marketing is not matter of fact. Is and you you I'm sure you know this is you know it's not matter of fact. We're all putting out our best hypothesis into the marketplace, and then we're making adjustments as we go. Nobody puts anything out and knows how it's going to work on the first try. The, be the best thing is collecting the data, looking at it, and say, okay, this worked, this didn't work, something went wrong here, now let's go back to the drawing board and let's keep trying until we strike gold. Clients who yeah. think like this is supposed to go happen, you know, on the first go round, th those are, are headache people. <laughs> Y'all got to be open people. to pivot. You got to yeah. be open to pivot. Like I'm telling you, like, I would pivot so many times. Like, I reinvent myself so many times. I see the market. I'm like, hold up. Yeah. Ah, yeah, because I, I remember listening. you were doing, like, movies or videos or something at one yeah, point, right? I, yeah, I, that's I, when I, I first started, started following you. Yeah, I've been doing this for <laughs> 10 years, right? And I just happened to start with one of my close friends was K-Camp, right? So I had oh, to yeah. go up K-Camp, right? And and so it got me stuck in the music world. So I was doing music videos for him and uh, Sai and all these other people. Mm -hmm. And I blew up in the music video world. But then my mentors start getting more on business, and I'm like, man, I like business. And I start studying America and business. I said, hold up. I need to get by these businesses. But my passion was like movies. I was like, hold on. Well, let me go shoot some movies first. And I shot some movies, and then I get to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars out of my pocket and my rims touch. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Something ain't right. Something ain't right, right. All right. Well, I, I I don't like how that feel. And I started learning financing and credit. And then I started adding that to it. And then I started teaching creatives business, right? So mm. I started focusing on the creatives, people who look like me, that's super right. passionate but don't know the business. And then I got to realize, like, hold up. I'm not about to be begging these folks to teach these folks how to make some more money. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I always wanted to just deal with entrepreneurs and business owners because that's what I've been. I've been... I haven't had a nine to five since 2010. So I've been an entrepreneur for 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I done really been through it before the internet phase. Yeah. Right? So I, I'm telling like really not no little pizza job here and there. No job for since 2010. I, I worked at Steak and Shake and I walked out and never went back. Right. So I really understand. It. And 
I start focusing on businesses. But when I start focusing on businesses, I'm thinking you can just jump out there. Nah, man, you got to shut up and listen. <laughs> like, yeah. They telling you they problems, right? And then you get to like, nah, I just want to work with the big brands. Bro, the big brands are already dealing with somebody. They already got systems together, mm -hmm. right? So then you just got to realize and pivot and see what works. And then I really found out what works. And like, I think uh, I made my first million in 2016 for music videos. And so that's what I was using to, to transition. But I knew I didn't want to be there no more. Right. So I was like, man, let me come in the business side. And then we done, we done five X that shit. <laughs> <laughs> But I had to learn, so I, I learned something every day. Like, even with my copy, like, I got a social media manager to, who works.